November 2023 update. Angel and Z Radio is now operating under the name of Living Proof New York. Living Proof will be a fresh perspective and approach to New York City graffiti and its related subcultures. Issue 4 of Living Proof Magazine is now available on our Patreon and online shop, featuring Mint and Surf PPP, Wiki, Kayla Barnett, M1, and Cajun BTM. Issue 4 runs for the entire month of November and will not be rerun afterwards. Issues of Living Proof Magazine are sent to all our Patreon members on the Living Proof Magazine tier. Patreon members also gain access to any monthly products we put out, our growing archival section, and our content library with episodes, written interviews, film projects, and bombing videos. New website is now live, livingproofnewyork.com. You are listening to Living Proof Radio, a radio show and magazine supported by Art Primo, a graffiti shop like no other that has been proudly serving the community from New York to Seattle and beyond. Mops, ink, paint, sketchbooks, markers and much much more. Artprimo.com. The highest level. So I was with um I was with Mario like 2 days ago and I was looking through the book Lonely City. Mm. Um really looking at it and I was thinking about how the majority of or a lot of uh purists or people who are really into photos kind of sh- stray away from iPhone photography because there's this nostalgia and there's this like you know, love for film and love for not even just film, but also like cameras and the art of of having a camera and how in the past era, it was really like special to have a camera and you would make photographs rather than rather than images. However, looking at that book, kind of like it kind of like strays away from that because it is an actual photo book with what I consider to be photographs, Um, even if they are made with iPhone. I don't really think it makes a difference. So, yeah, what's uh, what's up with that? (laughs) uh well i'm uh well i'm i say i would say i'm i'm mainly like a more traditional photographer uh like using a camera film all that stuff and um i totally get the like the hierarchy of um fine art and where like digital and then like at the very bottom is probably like in, in this day and age anyway like uh using your phone as a camera um but i don't really really uh think that it matters you know in terms of like image creation uh i don't i just don't think that there needs to be um something that is a photograph and something that isn't when it's you know when it clearly is um i think like i've made two books that have used phones and i think like to me, I I kind of like that it challenges that idea, and especially like now where cameras are 100% like ubiquitous, like every single person has one in their pocket. So I thought I would just kind of like try to push what I could do with it, but not really. Like I don't I don't really push like the um, there's no like there's not much of a like artistry, you know. There's there's it's it's pretty de skilled. But I just kind of wanted to see what I could do with it and see if I could create a body of work that I thought was, you know, kind of important. Um, but how I started it was just using the phone. This is like maybe in like 2006 or seven. I got a smartphone and I was starting to I was using the phone as sort of just like using the, the camera on the phone as sort of like a note taking device, you know, like a skate spot, a book or like um this was also the time when you could start sending photos to each other with your phones. And, um, like I started to just get into the habit of, uh, like wanting to show someone something immediately, which is something people take for granted today. But like back then it was like, Oh, this is like, you know, like this person is really going to think this is cool or funny or whatever. So I started to amass like, you know, these photos and that's kind of like how this type of this like series of, Uh, or this like form of my photography sort of like became a thing. So I think like it is sort of like a challenge to like traditional photography, which I like. Um, But honestly, I'm not really trying to make like a statement or anything like that. It's just, it's just another form that I use. Has Um, it it blurred the line for you? Because you know, you really, you make this book and it looks, it looks super good. Um, Has that changed your idea of like, 
you know, sometimes like I have this one friend, he can't, carries around a small digital camera, but it, it takes pretty high quality images. And he was just like, I, I was, it, it just, the camera itself looks beautiful. So I was looking at it and I was like, yo, I kind of want one of those. That's pretty ill. What do you think about that? And he was saying like, it's, it is ill, but sometimes it's almost like, it's almost like you might as well have just shot it with a phone. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I would say that it, it affects it affects the 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 practice right because like i have a camera and then i have a phone and you really have to kind of like when you come across something like i have to kind of like make a distinction as to like how i'm going to um do this you know what i mean like is it a phone is it a camera and sometimes in that moment everything is lost so that's frustrating um but i think like the work is my work is very distinct with like the phone stuff and then the other stuff like the phone stuff is sort of it has to do with it, it is very much me but i think there's like there's a lot more like irreverence and maybe like humor in it um it's sort of like my like it's more like a diary like a day-to-day -day kind of like thing mm -hmm. um, the other stuff is i feel like you know i have to think about it a lot more in terms of image sharing sharing images in a book versus sharing image or sharing images in like more of a physical way whether it be at a show, a big print of one, or them all being compiled in a book, and then you're and then you're sharing it online, do you feel like there's any difference in terms of that approach that is taken when you're posting it um, into a certain frame, whether like usually on Instagram uh, or in a book? Yeah, um, the those contexts all come with uh, different stuff, like definitely, and there's pluses and minuses to all of them, but I think like how you experience photos in a book versus a gallery versus online they're all they're all very different um i feel like uh online is like kind of like the you know it has the most hang-ups and it has like the like as far as experience goes it has the least uh power like i think like i like that like i like that instagram exists and we can use it and it's like a wonderful tool but it it definitely does kind of like, you know, it, it, it really, um, it really affects how you make work. And I think that like the book is kind of the ultimate way to present in my opinion, you know what I mean? Because like editing those photos down to a book really, you're allowed to like, first of all, there's like the, the scale of it and there's, you can, there's more of a, like, there's more of an editing process and narrative because I think online, like in, in Instagram, especially because most of these photos were just stories. Like I, I just used as story posts and there's no order and it's all basically chronological. And so there's no real narrative, but in the book form, you can, you know, you can create that, you can like edit it and you can, you can kind of create a story, which is like, I think, um, more enjoyable and sort of just like better yeah so yeah. did you just save them save them from your story then go and i just i i'm i'm extremely disorganized but for some reason with with all these phone photos i'm i'm pretty organized like i i uh i i like download them onto my computer i like favorite them i download them onto my computer and then i uh i have folders for months so okay. it'll, so it'll be like January 2022 February March and then that's kind of so they're pretty organized mm -hmm. and also they have they have time stamps and everything so it's like you know it's very useful and they're how easy to organize how do you think that social media has affected the creation of art um that being like it's the main specifically Instagram it's like the main sharing platform it's like on the one end every every artist and business every person has their own their own like platform that it's like they are the author they are the publisher they are they kind of have the decision to what they can and can't post and in in, a, in that way it gives people a lot of power because they can share it but then on the other end <clears throat> because everyone has that power there are so many so many people now and so many projects happening that it becomes harder and harder to stand out and the artist might also be you know almost like captured held captive by the audience because you're striving for for likes and you're striving for kind of that acceptance that comes with social media is all based off of numbers at the end of the day and like you're feeding into the algorithm have you ever felt that way yeah totally like so social media completely affects how you make work and it totally affects your sort of um your perspective and i think it's like i think it's like very damaging if you're not able to control it and it's very very difficult to control but i think like the main so first of all i think it's 
I think it's a wonderful tool. And I think it's like a tool that has brought me like a lot of inspiration. I've discovered like a lot of stuff from it and it's helped me a lot. Um, but that being said, like it, it also, um, it's also super detrimental because it, uh, for me anyways, it, um, it sort of, uh, it, it kind of makes you want to quantify the value of what you're doing too early. And what I mean by that is like, um, like you're so eager to show stuff online, right? Like you're so eager to show it and so eager to share it and so eager to like, you know, receive affirmation and like that little serotonin boost or whatever. And I think that's a little bit unhealthy with art making because, uh, one thing I've noticed, especially with photography is that like a lot of that stuff needs time to breathe, time to live, time to mature and your, your opinion of it, uh, needs time so if like for example if i post something and it doesn't and it doesn't uh and it doesn't receive what i wanted or expected then i might sort of treat it as sort of a failure mm. and i think that's a little bit um wrong like it it's a misuse of of the tool you know what i mean um but in terms of like sharing and and um like mining for ideas i think it's like totally incredible yeah no, but absolutely. but de but definitely like you have to have a lot of discipline to use it consistently i think like artists have um especially like younger artists they they might show their work a little too quickly and they also reveal themselves a little bit too much you know what i mean i think like something should be said for the mystery of um creating art and uh, also like oversharing can be a turnoff you know yeah. like if if you kind of like like you ever you, like you know like you've like looked up to someone your whole life and then you go to their instagram or their social media and you learn about like what they like and their behavior and you know you're like oh this person's actually like super corny and you know i don't like it, it affects how you view their work yeah so um i don't know all that stuff it's it's pretty confusing and it's difficult to balance but i think i mean it's possible but for me personally, it's, it's, I suffer from it just like everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel like you've, you've allowed it to affect your art or no? Cause I feel like viewing you from an outsider's perspective, you've just kind of kept true to your own thing forever. So it's really interesting to hear your perspective cause you're out there, you know, making stuff, you're out there doing, doing, make, you know, forming a company in this, in this in this mix that we're in with uh this thing being the ruling platform like imagine sci-fi or imagine publishing um and getting lonely city out there without or even like anything like skate videos today or any type of like project without that tool that is instagram that's become so central to our to our lives mm -hmm. it's it almost like seems like crazy but obviously <laughs> that happened for forever and the time period that it hasn't happened has been really short yeah i mean i can I mean, I, I lived in a time and did all this, this type of stuff. Like I didn't do exactly this type of stuff, but I lived in the time before all of this existed. So I, you know, I have a pretty good understanding of like what it was like. And, um, yeah, I think from the outside looking in, it might seem like I really got it down, but I don't like it. it it's, it's like a, it's like everything in life where it's like it, every day you got to wake up and you got to like, okay, I have to. I have to like think about my practice and I have to, th I have to think about everything that I'm doing. And I think with social media and trying to maintain a, a level of like, um, I don't know, like just like a little bit of mystery is good, is good for you. And I think it's just healthier to, uh, not reveal too much, especially like as a, I mean, even just as a person, but like, especially if you're like creating something, I think it's important not to rely on like this, this, like, um, this just in, in this, this like sea of people that you don't know and these strangers, I think it's like important to make a distinction that their opinions, uh, shouldn't really affect how you make something. Sure. After you've made it, you can like take stock and be like, okay, like, you know, everybody hates this thing. But I think as you're making it, I think you should trust yourself a little bit more and not rely on, um, you know, just like, like a, like a like, like something that's just like quantitative or yeah. like even, even the negative bias stuff with comments, like, you know, like reading negative comments, like 
that's like extremely detrimental and it's something that um like it's hard it's hard you you know you can get like a hundred positive comments but you only remember the you only remember the negative one even if it's a little bit negative yeah like do you read comments uh i try not to but yeah like i think i'm just like as human as the next person where like i do take a look and i I, but i do do this thing where like okay like you read you you like get you you kind of like you get some some good ones and then you stop like you know you just don't go too far because you're gonna find what you're looking for you know it's gonna be in there so it's like a numbers game if you if a thousand people see it even if there's one hater there's gonna be one hater yeah and i also think that like there's a lot of people who who want to be that person or at that moment they really feel like, Oh, like everybody loves this thing. Like I'm going to point out why they shouldn't. And you know, I, I get that. I get that point of view. Like yeah. I get, I get that kind of like, um, the need for that person to do that. It's like this little, like, Oh, like, you know, I know a little bit better. It's like kind of there. It's like a little bit like this, like, you know, they can like be above all these people. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, you know, that's just going to happen all the time. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I was listening to another interview of yours and you were talking about your experience with, with, uh, with America, your experience with companies and your experience in terms of like, kind of like the creation of just kind of like the creation of art, but also just like the creation of something that's relevant to you and important to you versus the numbers game that big corporations are looking for. Not to say that America has always been a big corporation, but just any big corporation, they're at the end of the day, like when other heads are in charge that might not know about whatever, um, they don't see the value that maybe like the people in it see and they see the value of numbers. Maybe they don't understand like what let it get to this number. Was that staying true thing? Was that being yourself thing? Um, you know, you're, you're doing sci-fi now, been doing sci-fi. How have you approached it in a way that you can hopefully, uh, avoid that? Is that even possible if you're trying to grow as a company? Um, it's it's not easy, but um, and at the end of the day, what what you're talking about are all businesses, and you know I think like uh, well, what I'll say is like what I try to do is I try to take everything that I've ever seen in my career and just sort of ruminate on it before I make any type of decision where like, okay, like what, like I, first I would say, first what I ask myself is like, what, what is the most fair decision, you know? And then I kind of go from there. But, um, I think like in terms of like the numbers, uh, and I think like what you're really talking about is uh, the profit motive. Yeah. Um, that's difficult to balance with anyone who, wants to be creative and honest and so like as a skateboarder like all the years that i've dealt with um companies you know i've dealt with the small and i've dealt with the very large and it's very frustrating because uh you know like at the end of the day um a corporation or a company or whatever you want to call it it's made up of a lot of different people with a lot of different incentives and everybody is trying to kind of like fight for what they got to do and uh it a lot a lot in the uh like that can really hurt um how cool or creative a company is so like uh like as a pro skateboarder you know like um trying to do your ideas or trying to be who you are sometimes that doesn't that really doesn't line up with you know um person a b c d e at the company and it's very very frustrating but and but you can you know those people have like families they have like their incentives the shit that they need to take care of and um a lot gets lost and it's like super frustrating and i think for me i just try to keep keep it small that's sort of like the that is the simplest philosophy for me is like uh slow just be slow and like not try to explode. I think that's like kind of like every every person, every friend of mine or every person I've ever seen try to do this. Um, that's been the one thing that sort of gets them in the end is like they just they want too much too quickly. And, um, you know, it's but it's hard. It's like I don't I don't I wouldn't say I do everything right. Um, but uh, it is really, really hard to deal with 
companies. I really hate it. I really, as even now doing what I do and also even as a pro skateboarder because, uh, you know, I just, I just really wanted to do my ideas and I wanted to be who I was. And that, and, um, that didn't always, uh, that just didn't always land well, you yeah. know, when it, when it comes to like a bunch of people who sometimes like don't skate at all, you know, they like companies like America, you know, they'll, they'll just every three years, they'll just hire someone to come in, audit the whole company. And then like, it doesn't, their choices, they just look at what's on paper, you know, the, their choices aren't like based on, um, like how like a pro skater is perceived in skateboarding, you know, it's just like, Oh, they're like, we're paying them this much and they're only doing this. And, you know, it's just, it's, it's really black and white. So that's tough to deal with. And that just comes with growing, right? Like that would just come naturally with growing when you're, if you're a skater and you're a skater owned and operated company and you go and, and you're trying to grow to this level and involve some venture capitalists, involve some people who are going to throw some bread to, to make these crazy moves. You, at the end of the day, like if you, unless you're an expert in business or some shit, you're just a skateboarder. Like you don't know about this shit. You hire these people who don't know about your side of the shit. Maybe they don't listen to you as much because in their minds, you don't have credentials. And then before you know it, the creation that was is like no longer. Yeah, I think like uh, definitely the uh, when people throw around skater owned, I think that's always so funny because like, you know, like Soltech, which is America, that's technically skater owned because the owner skates or used to skate. But like, I mean they're business people and i think there's there's like a boiling frog sort of thing going on where like in order to have a very successful and aggressive business like i think over time you need to change you need to like you need to make decisions that will slowly kind of uh challenge your principles you know what i mean like as a non-business person like like i have to make decisions all the time that are like kind of shitty to me where i'm just like Mm, I, I wish I didn't have to do that, but, mm. but I do. And I think like at a certain level when there's like a lot of money involved, there's like livelihoods involved and all that stuff, like people over time will just change. It doesn't really matter if you started out as a skateboarder, like you will, you will eventually forget, you know what I mean? Like you'll just be like your, your job is to make money for the company so you can like live and you can like survive in this like insane world. So I don't really, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't blame people, but it's interesting. Yeah. It's hard to be success, be a successful person in business and, um, maintain like all your, all the principles that you, you came, you came to it with, you know? How did you learn how to, how to operate, um, that? Cause I, you didn't go to, you didn't go to business school or anything like that, right? You're just skating. No. Coming I mean, up. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Like, uh, I just try to use common sense, I guess. And I, and I, and I ask a lot of people yeah. their opinions. I try to get as, as many opinions as possible. And I have good help. I have people that like, they have, they specialize in things that I don't, you know, like I'm just mostly creative. So like all, all other things like at sci-fi, like at the end of the day, I will like make the call, but I need a lot of help to come to a decision. Um, and I sort of just, it really just is common sense. You just sort of teach yourself. You just sort of like ask yourself like, Oh, like what would you want? Um, so I don't know. I guess it's mostly intuitive. Yeah. I didn't, I have no credentials or skills really. <laughs> how long, how long you been, uh, you've been doing sci-fi for? Um, let's see, I guess like, I guess like five years. I don't really know like the, I don't really know the, when it really started because it was just, it was such a slow, I don't know what I'm doing. Like for the first like three years, I was just like, oh, I'll just, I'll just like make stuff, you know? And, but it turning into like an, an entire skateboard company, like that had to change. I had to like bring in people that like knew what, knew how to do this, um, to do it, uh, like properly. But it was just like an art project for a really long time. What do you mean by, by properly uh, running a skate company? Like someone who, uh, like I'm just talking about in terms of like logistically, I'm just talking about like calendars, how merchandising, like how much to make, uh, where to make it, um, you know, uh, just all, like the marketing aspects, all that stuff, all those things I, I was doing in the beginning by myself and I would just try to like intuitively do it. And I made a lot of mistakes, but like I, I work with people that like know how to do that. So um, that's what I mean by properly, you know, because I think like a lot of, skateboard companies 
they're awesome and they are fun and creative and it's a bunch of friends but maybe and everybody loves it but maybe like on like a on the business side like it's it's totally chaotic and so i i just try to i and i'm like you know business i hate it it's you know it's kind of like it's it's just very frustrating for me but i like that i can have a business that like supports skateboarders and i can support me and my ideas Mm -hmm. um but yeah i don't know i just sort of figured it out yeah in terms of supporting you and your ideas um what do you what do you what do you want out of out of um sci-fi versus like where you're at now and then when you started did you want one thing and now your view of it has changed because you've probably been learning shit for the past five years and experimenting with shit and like even just like changing as a human being naturally, even if it's only a little bit, um, that's going to reflect in like, I guess your art project, you know? So, um, you know, in the beginning, I just wanted something to do cause I, I sort of like quit all my sponsors or got kicked off and then was sort of like really disillusioned with being a pro skater. Plus I'd been a pro skater since I was 16. It was like my entire identity for my entire li- uh, adult life. And, I just had kind of like a, you know, I just had like a small meltdown and it was just like, I can't, I don't want to do this right now. It's like not, I'm very unhappy. So I just didn't do anything for like a year. And then um, sci-fi was sort of just an art project. It was just sort of a fun, it was like, just like a fun thing to do. Um, So I really had no plan. It really happened because of the response. I just saw like what was possible and that people seemed to really like it. So it's just sort of like pushed me to like slowly make it into a real thing, you know? Like I made like 24 hats and I gave them away and that's how it started. And I was like, oh, I'll make, maybe I'll make t-shirts, maybe I'll make hoodies, maybe I'll make just like random stuff. And so it just sort of like happened like that. And now I've, now that I've like sort of, you know, I've sort of <laughs> now I've like ended up in this place that I didn't really expect to do, but now I like it because, um, it really is a challenge and it's a challenge to my uh like what i'm capable of doing and it's also and that's good because i like i like um i just like to it's nice to be challenged creatively and then kind of like get to the other side where you're like i did it you know like i i did something that i didn't really uh i didn't think i was good enough to do and it's just that just sort of happens every time like every time i like make new stuff i'm like there's this like relief that comes when I'm just like, Oh, I did it. But the, uh, what I like about it is also with the team is like supporting skateboarders. And, um, uh, I really like that part because I never wanted to do that. I was like, Oh, like, you know, just being one myself, I was like, Oh, this is, this looks like such a nightmare. But then it just slowly happened where like, uh, I found myself on the other side of it being like, Oh wow. Like now I'm here. And, but it's nice to help people, I think. And it's nice, and it's nice that, uh, that people like it. I think there's like a, there's something so special about that, that I'm like so grateful for is like people really seem to like what I do. I'm sure there's a lot who don't, but uh, it's, it's just nice when you make something and, and people find a way to enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. Especially you, you're putting so much time and energy into it and thought, and it's kind of like a compilation of your entire life because it's kind of like everything that you are is affected by everything from the past. And it's all led up to, this is your vision of what you fuck with. And now here it is. So if people, you know, like that, that's pretty sick. Yeah. And then, you know, what's funny is it's, it's, it's not always, <laughs> and, and like, and it's also like not always what you want it to be, which is like kind of crazy. It can be something that you don't want it to be. And then and it's, it's better. And sometimes it's just like, Oh wow. Like that's, it's, I think like anyone who makes stuff understands that like what you see, like in, in your mind is like, and what actually happens is it's so, it can be so devastating. It's like photography too. (laughs) It's like photography too, because like, I forget who said this, but someone was like, uh, what you photograph is never what you see. And that's, I really believe in that. Like it's, it it really isn't, it's not quite what you saw. It's almost there, but it's like never exactly what you saw. And I sort of, with all the graphics and everything, I sort of feel the same way too. It's like, it's never like completely what you want. Um, and that has to do with so many variables like time and, um, 
like if you if you wanted an artist to do something for you like what they're capable of doing how well you can direct them their schedule there's just like so many i have to deal with so many variables like on a daily basis uh and everybody does but it does but it, but also i will say it's it is just some it's only something that i know you know what i mean like when you when you make something there's always like your sort of like lone perspective where you're just like oh, i wish i could have i wish that was like a little no one else will know but you're just mm-hmm. like i wish that it could have been a little bit better in this way i think people view like like skateboarding in that way too where like you know people if you do something and they're like oh that was you know that was amazing or whatever but in your mind you're like yeah but i know i could have done it better or differently or faster or i don't know maybe it's kind of a curse but i think like it but that sort of mentality i think makes you better um, in a lot of ways yeah what was what was life like for you as a pro skater for so long starting at 16 and then getting to the point where you got um you said you were a little bit disillusioned with it at, at certain times um what what was it like well in the beginning it was uh it was just um a total dream come true like it was everything that i'd ever wanted um and I couldn't have been more grateful, but there was always this, um, (laughs) there was always this like really funny, like sense of like doom on the horizon. I think it like has something to do with maybe how I was raised, but like, um, there was, I, I always felt like, I think a lot of people enter pro skating and they're like, they, they're really like, oh wow, this is it. I I made it and I don't have to think about anything else ever again. I was never like that. I kind of was just always like a little bit stressed out about like what I was going to do when I wasn't a pro skater, but, but totally enjoying it at the same time. Just being like, wow. I mean, like I was just completely autonomous, like getting paid as a, in high school, you know what I mean? Like it was insane. I, I, I really did appreciate like how much freedom it gave me. Um, it just gave me total, all I could make all the choices by myself all of a sudden it was like such a gift that's also a curse but it was mostly a gift and it was just you know and it was also just so amazing my job was just to wake up every day and try to be better at skating which I just like liked anyways so I mean really can't complain about that part um but you know there's there's so many sides to being a a pro skater there and everyone has a different experience but you know, uh, I mean, so much could be said about what it's like growing up as a pro skater, but it's, uh, it's definitely like for me, because I cared about it a lot, it was very challenging most of the time. Um, but there was always, I, I was always grateful and I had a good time, but. So you had like a conscious idea that like maybe one day this would end. Yeah. I mean, it was more than a conscious idea. It was like just this sort of very very real inevitable thing and i don't think that's too hard to swallow like it's like yeah this is gonna end and um and also you know my parents were were not very like supportive of the idea of like not going to college and like just going for this whole skateboarding thing it was it was very foreign to them and i think they kind of like in i mean growing up with them they really instilled like a like uh, this fear inside of me that like, if you don't have shit figured out, you're going to be fucked. You know what I mean? So, um, I just always had that inside. And I think that's, I think like in a way that sort of pushed me to be like, as like successful as I possibly could. It's just, um, like as a skateboarder, um, uh, because there was, there's just such a fear of, um, like if you don't, if you don't make it, you know, like, uh, I also, I also grew up with this, I like the, like the, it's like, this is cultural, but like, if like, like receiving love is about accomplishment, you know what I mean? Like you have to accomplish things and we'll love you. That's not like literally true, but in a way it is in, in my culture. So I think like that really unconsciously applied to how I skated too. It's like, you have to like you have to be absolutely as good as you possibly can be um or or you won't get what you want yeah yeah yeah, no no i relate to that i relate to that a lot honestly um and i think about that a lot in my my current day life um because i kind of kind of came up with similar thought process 
because of the way my parents would talk and not to say that that's necessarily wrong. And I feel like, um, at least speaking from my perspective and what happened to me, um, you know, parents just, especially when they come from a different country and they're really struggling mad hard to, to make a life for you, they just want the best for you. So it's like, am I going to approach this with a plan or no plan? Of course, they're going to say, well, approach it with a plan. They're not just going to be like, don't approach it with a plan. However, um, as I've talked to more people and just like grown up a little bit more, I realized that some of the illest shit that's ever happened happens with uh, organicness and with no plan. And it honestly really fills me with a sense of hope and inspiration when I hear about sick things that went down and were kind of legendary or even just sick things, sick things in general. And they worked out in the end, which to me was like, that could never happen unless you have a plan. And I still <laughs> hold on to that a lot. Yeah. Like sci-fi, like starting off with no plan. And it's just kind of like to make things and see what happens. You know, a part of me would be like, how are you ever going to do that? You got to have to, you got to have to, you're going to need a crazy plan and you're going to have to, what, what about a month from now? What are you going to make these hats, give them to people? And then what happens a month from now? Like, yeah. And then what you just spent some couple hundred bucks and you know, but it doesn't have to be that way. And when I hear that it, um, it gets me pretty pumped. No, definitely. But I'll also say that like none of this stuff that I ever did, I did alone. I did by myself. Like, like people, people are like, Oh, sci-fi, how'd you do it? Like blah, blah, blah. blah. And I'm just like, well, I mean, you have to, you have to remember, like, I was, like, I was, I was skateboarding for, like, I was, like, a pro skater for, like, 20 years. Like, a lot of people, like, a lot of skaters, like, like, know who I am. So, it, there's, like, a built-in audience to sci-fi. So, like, people will always ask me, like, wow, like, how'd you start your, your business and stuff? And I'm, like, well, I mean, like, I, I base it on my life. Like, I, like, I have an advantage over most people in, in this, like, in this like you know ecosystem of skateboarding you know so i always try to like always point that out because like i didn't just like start a business with nothing i i, I had this whole like history yeah. like involved with it but what you said about like yeah like just just sort of like um like uh trusting your intuition and like taking risk i think will always um, get the best results sometimes it, it won't you know like you'll like you shouldn't count on that but like yeah like <laughs> like like it's important to to fucking go for it like that's the only like like scared money don't make money like it's like the same thing it's just like you have to take a big risk if you want like a big reward and sometimes you're gonna like you it won't it won't always work out like sometimes it, it just won't but um but it is like important that you that you try and that you that you go for it and that you're prepared to to fail i think that's like a huge part of um like what i've learned over the years is just like um sort of managing failure um whether it's like day to day or like big um it's i think it's just healthy to um to always like remember that yeah i mean luckily now Luckily now, like you can with an Instagram account, you can do so much. And then like a simple Shopify account, you can do so much. If you're hyped on some shit, you can make some shit. Um, I feel like the barrier to entry is is more open than it's probably is lower than it's probably ever been before in the history of humanity. Like we're, li we're living in a pretty sick time at the end of the day, like social media has a lot of has a lot of stuff that comes with it. It's like yin yang and everything, though. And there's going to be shit that comes with it. But it, like it gives it does inevitably like undoubtedly give you as the user a lot of power it's just a tool that you can use for essentially whatever you you can use a hammer for a million things you know yeah i mean it's it's literally the tool that i use to speak to customers you know like and to speak to like um people who like are interested in what i'm doing um and yeah it's uh I mean, it's good and bad. It's it's really you have to you just have to like, you just have to like zoom out and and manage like all the negative aspects of this tool because it's just it at the end of the day it's a technology we control it we decide whether we want to pay attention to it or not. But um, yeah, it's. But the what you said about um, like entering this world, uh, like if you want to like make something, uh. Yeah, like I grew up in a time where this, this this stuff didn't exist and you really needed to count on like, like say if you want to skate, start a skateboard company in like 1995, 
like you need you need like like from what i from what i gathered at that time it's just like okay well you need to go to like a distribution company and they they are gonna they're gonna do everything for you and they're gonna take like almost everything from you you know like i just thought like oh that's just how these things work and with the with like the with with like the internet and everything like man a a kid a kid at stoner park can start a company on his phone in like an hour you know what i mean it's pretty crazy and i think that's really cool but um it also sort of adds to sort of um the static in our li- like th- just just the the availability of everything like all the information in the world all the time i think is i don't know it's it's kind of creepy and it definitely needs to be like you need to like i don't know i think a lot of people should appreciate like the power that they're like fucking with you know what yeah, I mean? like, no, no it, doubt. like it's like uh i don't know it's crazy i'm glad i lived in a time where it didn't exist because like i can really because people talk shit about you know like instagram all this other they like talk about it but i'm like i i can really appreciate it because i can really see the see like what like an incredible tool it is yeah. even even though it's like straight up evil <laughs> were you worried when uh you know being a pro skater for so long then all of a sudden you're not and you, you have uh you know a lot of the sponsors got dropped or you quit or whatever happened but basically there's a life change and uh and it's pretty drastic because it's what you've been used to since since 16 were you worried when that first happened um what were your thoughts on that I mean, sure. Like I, like my whole identity was like this thing and I really was struggling, but it really was like internal because I think like from the outside looking in, I didn't, I hadn't really done anything. I didn't like announce to the world, like I'm retiring or I quit or like, you know, thanks for everything, everybody. I just sort of quietly stopped being sponsored and stopped like just doing all that stuff and caring and it felt it felt really good i was like oh like i'm gonna go to the skate shop i'm gonna like buy a board i'm gonna wear the shoes i want i'm gonna go skate curbs with my friends and it was awesome and it was like oh it was like something i really needed so my identity as a skateboarder didn't change just my identity as like a pro skater and like you know even today like i guess i'm i'm still a pro skater like i have a board gave myself a board like you know like like i'm still a pro skater but during that like little window of time where I was like kind of taking a break, it was depressing. I had like a full blown identity crisis where I was like, Oh wow. Like I'm not that thing anymore. I chose this like, um, which I took comfort in because a lot of people don't get to choose. You know, a lot of people are just like, you know, they're just like thrown out. They're just like, see you later. But I chose to do it. And, um, I definitely had like kind of a crisis. I mean, sci-fi is sort of a result of, of a depression post, that decision so like i decided to do that to, to very depressed and then sci-fi sort of like brought me out of that because i always had like my photography but i never really wanted to like i didn't want to become like a commercial photographer to like make money i just want i wanted to keep i was like very protective of it i was like i want photography to just be my art and so when sci-fi happened it was sort of an opportunity to sort of reevaluate what i was capable of um so in that way, I'm like just really grateful for it. And it was really my wife actually who kind of like got me out of that. She was just like, you're so miserable. Like you need to do something. Kind of getting fed up with me. She's like, I can't stand you being like this every day. Like this is so annoying. And I was like, I know. And then that's how it started. So what were you, what were you doing uh, day-to-day life before <laughs> sci-fi but after the sponsors? Honestly, like I was just skating with my friends and I was just like walking around shooting photos, uh, just sort of enjoying, just sort of trying to enjoy myself, uh, but at the same time, totally stressing out. I don't know. It's hard to explain. Mm -hmm. I really wasn't doing anything and it was nice. Uh, I had the luxury of doing that, you know, I really, I did appreciate that, but yeah, I was just sort of lost. And I think I, and like, I think like I needed to be lost for a while in order to like really try to focus on something because I don't know, I just had stopped caring about being a pro skater and I needed like a time. And you know, it's so funny, like I'm making, I'm being melodramatic, you know, I'm like making it sound like it was like this, you know, like 
like it was like ruining my life being a pro skater but it wasn't it was just sort of it was just sort of spiritual like i just needed i needed to like be away from this thing that consumed my life for you know like 20 years 20 plus years yeah how, how different is it today having a board on on sci-fi which is your thing versus having a board on someone else's thing or dealing with sponsors what are like what are they exactly asking of you because you know obviously if you have a board on your own shit it's like you're kind of the boss so you have more control you don't have to necessarily put any things on yourself that you don't want but if it's shoe sponsor maybe clothing truck sponsor wheel sponsor board sponsor then it's you're just dealing with more people so how different is that well today i don't have any sponsors yeah i don't deal with any of that sort of by choice like i guess i could like you know i could get like a truck sponsor or something but it's just like why like i don't need to do that um and you know it's i think it's it's uh I mean, it's nice writing for my own company because, yeah, like I'm in I'm in charge. Uh, <laughs> but like um, it feels different because I don't know if it, it feels different for me because like sci fi is like it's like so much of my personality. It's just so different. Like if you, you know, you like if you like ride for Baker, it's like Baker is Baker. And like, you know, you need to find a way to like fit in there or if you ride for like you know whatever like girl or whatever it's just like you know you 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 ride for their company and what's nice about sci-fi for me and only i can say this but like it's just like i it's like those are like all my ideas and it has there's like a different kind of uh like um i don't know appreciation for that i keep saying appreciation a lot but uh um I don't know. I don't really know how to describe it. It's. Um, it sounds just better, honestly. It. It. I mean. I wouldn't say. <laughs> I wouldn't like blanket call it better because it kind of depends on where you are in life. Because back in the day, I w- I would never want to have a skateboard company because it was just so fun, like just being on someone else's ride. You're just like, oh, like all I got to do is skate with my friends and like film and like, uh, that's it. Sick. You know, like I, no responsibility. Like now I have tons of responsibility. I'm responsible for like other skaters like that, like s- is stressful. Um, so it's good and bad, you know, like they're like, sure, you're in total control, but then you're also totally responsible. Like if, if some shit happens or like someone's unhappy or, you know, you're unhappy. It's like, what if I like, was, what if I was just like, I don't want to do this tomorrow. Then like the whole, everybody would be like, oh, what are we going to do? You know, like. So that, that type, that is kind of scary, you know, but, but it feels really good. It's like, it's like cooking a giant dinner and like all your friends are there and they're all enjoying it. You know, you're like, oh, it feels good. Mm -hmm. You know, it kind of feels like that. Yeah. I mean, there's so many skate companies now. How do you feel? How do you feel sci-fi is carving its own way? Are you consciously doing that or is it just a result of whatever it is that you are? I just, I feel like it's probably just a result of what I'm doing because I'm not really looking I wasn't like I didn't really like come into this being like all right like what uh, like what market's not being uh, represented here how am I gonna fill that gap I was just kind of like well I'm just gonna make what I like and see what happens um, the other way would be would feel kind of not genuine to me but I like that there are so many companies and I like that there are so many small companies like there's a lot of companies that are like the size of sci-fi and I think that's like healthy. I don't think I, I mean I, I lived through the time where it was just like where like kind of like all the big companies decided everything and I think there was just less room for more ideas um, and I like that about now where like you can you know there I mean there are so many different types of companies and I think that's I think that's perfect what do you have planned um, going forward for sci-fi or your art or even skating well, for skating, um, I don't know. I'm getting kind of old, so like I can't, I can't do all my ideas anymore, which is pretty frustrating. But try to. I mean, we're gonna make a, a video, so like that's a nice. Um, I think like videos, video parts have always been something that I sort of both dread and look really forward to because it. There really are like it's like when a musician makes an album or something. You know, it's like this like. It's just this collection of work and ideas that represents you. And I really enjoy that process. 
well, enjoy that process might be a stretch, but like I do and I don't, you know what I mean? Like it's like everything worth doing is like pretty hard, mm-hmm. but um, that's something I look forward to is making this video and um, you know, and with my art, I just, you know, just keep do keep making it, keep making books. I like making books. Yeah. It's sort of what I like to do. Um, and just like explore those ideas. I have sort of have like multiple series that I work on at the same time. It's all, it's kind of like, I'm just like building, you know, a lot of, and that's how like, like the same with skateboarding. Like it's like, a, if you want to make a video part, like you just like build on it and it just takes a lot of time. And uh, again, back to Instagram, that's what makes it, that's what makes it kind of like, that's what sort of interferes with the practice, right? Is having this thing that you can constantly upload things to and share and receive, you know, positivity from and sort of like your ego and all the serotonin. And it's like really hard to resist, but it really affects the practice of making a video part, right? Like um, videos are much shorter now and like so much goes online immediately. Uh, it, you know, it's, it's this, it does the same thing to skateboarding as, as it does to art making. You yeah. Know? It's, no, no, no doubt. Yeah. I feel that myself. Um, Which is good and bad. Like, I think it's good and bad. Yeah. Because like you, you can, because you can post, like you can follow a skateboarder you really love and they'll just post like a little edit with just like flat ground and a few easy things. And you're just like, you're satisfied. No. You're, yeah. yeah. You're just so, yeah. like, oh, sometimes that's really that's cool. better. Yeah. And sometimes that's, that's much better because like, I think the idea of like, like in like 2009 filming a video part and it's just like, it like what was in vogue, like, like stairs, rails, gaps, like just like very high level skating like a like now so much more is uh in fashion and acceptable and like i think that's great i think it just the the internet really gives um it it just like widened the the field of creativity and what we have access to like it just like it just like blew it open and um like me personally i can appreciate like so much so many more different types of skating that I would never have been exposed to because, you know, I was just sort of in like just tunnel vision back then. Cause it's, cause like media was so, you know, it was so narrow back yeah. then, but yeah, now I can open up my phone and I can really explore like what, you know, like a group of friends is doing in like Detroit or whatever, just like, Oh wow. You can, you have access to all this stuff. It's, it's really good. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense that it was it was narrower, right? There's only so many companies now. It's like everybody, in a weird way, is their own is their own little voice, is their own little thing. So it just makes sense. There's going to be more. Yeah, there's going to be more, and there's going to be more shit, and there's going to be like, and then there's going to be some stuff that you're going to find that you're like, oh wow, this really speaks to me. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, I think it's I think it's cool. I think if as long as you use it the way that you need to use it like it's fine Mm -hmm. um but yeah well yo um thank you for thank you for coming on the show thank you for being you and doing your thing yeah thank you so much for having me oh yeah peace yeah thank you